Um, so in class today, what we did was we started our social studies notebook document inside of Google Docs. Um, if you don't know how to create a Google Doc, I went to Google Drive, which is drive.google.com. I went to new and I clicked Google Doc and I started a new one. Um, this is the one we started in class. And so I'm just gonna show some formatting stuff that we did um, as part of it. So to begin it, we're gonna have five kind of branches of discussions in class. Um, and we talked through these. So if you had been in class, I would have said, you know, what are five things we might talk about in class? And um, what we came up with was government. So I put that as our first one, elected and appointed officials. I have some abbreviations here, POTUS, the POTUS, so that's President of the United States, Vice President of the United States, SCOTUS, Supreme Court of the United States, U.S. Senate, U.S. Representative, state governors, and so on. So lots of elected officials inside of the government. That would be the first thing. We might talk about that in our first unit. We might not. Now, um, I put numbers here, and to be honest, like probably shouldn't have. I probably should have put little dots or um, some kind of other little thing, mainly because we'll, we'll look at things differently um, as we go through class. Uh, the next thing that I put was wars and conflicts. So, and we listed a couple of them. So like colonial wars, those would be the wars that happened in the US before the United States was a country. The civil war, which is still the, the most involving war of US citizens because it involved the entire country. It happened inside of our nation. Uh, the war for American or the war of American independence. So that's the Revolutionary War. It has different names. When we talk about it in class, we'll talk about names. Uh, the War of 1812, which I'll just give you a hint, started before 1812, ended after 1812, and basically was never really a war. Um, and then the last part, or at least it wasn't kind of, sort of. And the last one is Native American conflicts. These are difficult to call uh, wars, mainly because there was no declaration of war. Uh, handled by the U.S. government, and some of them happened before the U.S. government started. Some of them happened while the U.S. was being formed, and some of them happened after the U.S. government was formed. The next thing that we kind of talk, uh, are going to look at are elections, voting, and citizenship, and these all kind of tie in together. Now, somebody might say, why didn't you put that with government? And the reason why we separated that was mainly because we want to talk about the process of being a citizen, and that involves getting involved in the elections and the voting process. It does not involve how government officials work and what they do every day. Um, the next grouping are people, groups, and cultures. So we'll look at different groups of people in the United States, however they define themselves, um, religiously, culturally, language, um, just different ways. So that's sort of like a catch-all kind of thing. And the last one is you know, how we all got here and where are we going? So it's always great in a history class to sort of look through those and talk about what those are. Um, and that means everybody. When I say we all, I mean not just Eastern Europeans that came as part of the colonization process. I mean Western Africans, I mean East Asians, I mean Pacific Islanders, I mean Caribbean, um, South Americans, like everyone that has come to the United States over time. How did they get here in their different groupings? And then where is it that they're going after they came here? Because some of them came here to go somewhere else. Some of them came here to live um, a permanent life. So just what I want to talk about with the document. Here's some rules. First thing you do when you start a document, make sure you change the title. So this is going to be your social studies notebook. So we, you should call it social studies notebook. If you don't have a title up here, let me delete that and show you, of course, it says untitled document. If you click in it, I like to call it social studies. I have issues with typing sometimes. Social studies, notebook. And then I always like to try and put my name in the title of a document mainly because depending on how you share it, it may not show who the original author is or the owner is when it's viewed. So especially just, it's, it's a nice little way to do that. The next thing I did was I put a title here. Now in class, what I, what I showed everybody was this option. Now, 
if you type something, so you type these, it says five topics to talk about in class, and we put a heading on it. So if you see heading here, you see that. If you take the heading off, there's nothing over here. Now, since this is a document that's going to be lots of pages, it's going to have a whole bunch of stuff inside of it, you want to start adding headers, subheaders, things like that. So we're going to put a heading here. And if you notice, it puts it over here. Now, if I was on a different page and click that little blue link, it would send me back to here. The last thing I'm going to show you is how to insert a hyperlink. And this is part of the document. So like by the end of next Friday, what you're expected to do as a student is to have this document, have all five of these things there, and have at least three external hyperlinks. And in class next one, they were going to work on that and kind of go through like what those would be. So an easy way to do this is let's say you type your stuff up. Like it's, it's much easier to have everything typed before you insert the hyperlinks. And let's say I want to put a hyperlink to the US Senate. So I highlighted it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click it with two fingers, okay? Two fingers. And it gives me these options. If I click link, which is in, you know inserting a hyperlink, it'll give me suggestions. Because what happens is it'll give me a suggestion of documents I've written before where that phrase is listed, or it'll give me a suggestion of a web page. Now, before I open or link that web page, I want to see what it is. It gives me a little arrow. I'm going to click it make sure this is actually the web page we want and it is it is the united states senate it is the web page for the u.s senate as it stands so i'm going to go back i'm going to say yep that's what i want so i'm going to click on that one i'm going to click apply and doop. give it a second it's working really hard and there's the hyperlink and so now i have a hyperlink in here one of the other things you might notice is my paper is a different color. Since you're going to be typing on this document, what you might want to do is think about changing the document color. You know, all of this white space, if you're in your class, you know, if you're in your home and you're in a dark room, you might want to make sure that you have a document that isn't so much um, bright. So that way you don't have to mess around with the bright brightness settings on your computer. And the way to change that is to go into file, go down to page setup, and then what you can do is you can change the page color. I recommend picking stuff up here in these little bars. So like this one or this one, don't do anything too dark because then you have to switch your font color to white. And that can be difficult to read over time. Um, it, it causes like eye strain unless you make the font size really big. But if you make it a blue or a green or a yellow, you know, you can make it a color. And then see, it kind of changed the color tone to the back of it. When I was in class, I changed it to a blue. So this is what we did for our first class period today. I hope it works for everybody and enjoy.